Okay, five o'clock rock. You know, this is the time when we really let our hair down. You know what I mean, John? <laughs> <laughs> I think the pun, pun, pun well intended. <laughs> I think the, I'm the only one who can let her hair down here. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Donelia and John Newman. They are the hosts, co-hosts of uh, Keys to Success, uh, which plays on Thursdays, which plays at mm, 11 o'clock a.m. I get that right? On Correct. Thursdays. Correct. And today was their opening gambit, so to speak. <laughs> Exciting, okay? <laughs> now, this is th what we do now is this is Think Tech Tutorial. And it's a, a show that sort, of, um, that sort of looks at shows. It dissects shows, and it talks about how sausage is made. So we're going to call this episode Keys to Successful Sausage Making because the name of this show is Keys to Success. See, see the connection? Okay. Yeah, it, it works really well. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. <laughs> okay, so first, um, you know, since it's hot news, I want to talk about the traffic <laughs> and what, what kept me from getting here on time. Um, I, I just feel that we have terrible traffic in the city. Um, there are various reasons for that, um, all of which could be avoided. Do you agree with that? Or yes. are we at a point, you know, like a congestion point, where nobody, not even God himself, can fix it? Well, I would say that to fix this, you have to go all the way back to the infrastructure of the city. The city wasn't designed to accommodate the traffic that we're getting right now. Uh, we've grown in... I guess it's a surprise that, that the founding fathers and all the politicians since the founding fathers never really understood that there would be an increase in population of cars. Maybe they just didn't know that. I mean, I think they have to go back to school. All well, of them. well, we're a little concerned because of all the condo buildings going up and the roads, there's not enough roads and the traffic's going to be very congested, particularly in the Kaka'aka area. That's a real concern. It's going to be Kaka in the Kaka'aka area. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> With my accent, it's Kaka'aka. <laughs> Anyway, just a shout out to whoever is listening. Gee, can't you do something about the traffic? And if you are driving, can you please stay awake while you're driving? You know, and, really. and if not that, if you could make sure that Jay gets a car to come pick him up and bring him here so he doesn't have to get have a high blood pressure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll drive that car. <laughs> All they got to do, uh, how about an automated car? We're oh, going to get to that. Okay. You know, that's yeah. coming soon. That is. In fact, I read on the internet today that the... There's a group of, uh, I guess they're technology guys, and they're approaching the government and saying, enough with this bu bureaucracy over automated cars. You know, let's get to it. Let's mm -hmm. have them on the roads. Let's not wait anymore. Mm -hmm. 2017, automated cars on the highways. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to do. They're right. Because mm -hmm. it's going to save. You wouldn't have this traffic, honestly. Everything would be, you know, totally efficient, totally rational, and the, and the computer would not sleep while it was driving. You know? <laughs> But it would also take away your creativeness, you know. It will take away your choice making, you know, because I want a Chevrolet, I want this, I want that, I want a Maserati. And uh, when they make these automated cars, they're going to be exactly that, you know, it's things that will make things better. You know, we're going to take yeah. away the look. We just want yeah. efficiency. You can have your Mar Maserati, but we're going to put you in a special lane. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want the Maserati. I'm talking Somebody about... Somebody else. I'm talking about the, uh, the people that will be having some resistance. You bet. It's true. People are so emotional about cars. It's really absurd. They lock themselves in. You know, when I first arrived here a long time ago, I, I couldn't believe it that the cars, the taxi cabs, rather, were, were Cadillacs. What's this about? Why, why can't they have, um, you know... An ordinary car, a Chevrolet, anything. <laughs> a checker. Remember checker cabs? Oh, yes. Neil Abercrombie used to drive a, a real checker cab. Um, and the funny, why it was funny is because a, a lot of the cabs here are Cadillacs. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. Well, maybe because they had such large trunks. And people came with luggage back then, you know. Families came with luggage, and you didn't have to pay for extra bags. So... When you caught a cab, you needed space to, yeah. to put that. There you are looking at the bright side of things. I'm always looking at the bright side of things. That's why we have a show called Keys to Success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keys to Success. We, we did get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, okay, so you started the show today. Mm -hmm. um, what is the show? What's the concept of the show? 
Well, the concept of the show is that we work to help people understand what keys to success are. If they're looking, if they're frustrated with, with something that's happening or if they really want to accomplish something in their lives, what is that that they want to accomplish and our goals are to help people to get there. And simply state that we want to help people help themselves. Mm. Uh, we all have different things that we want in life and we all can achieve them. So what we look at is letting people know that there is a way if you stay positive, if you stay creative, if you make uh, informative decisions, and hands on, you know. Okay, so your guests are, I, I'm guessing here because it hasn't unfolded yet, but your guests are what? People who've been successful we can learn from? Yes. Or are your guests people who have not been successful who need to know? No, uh, people who are successful in whatever capacity. It could be in life, could be in relationship, it could be in business, could be in career. Um, there's this one individual that we'll be having on the show who actually uh, I, was, I mentored and in a short period of time he doubled his business just through mentoring once a week. We want to know, we want to know how yeah. that works. Yeah. 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 And, and so and he, he wanted to come <coughs> on the show and let people know that this works. Yeah. And we'll <laughs> also look at, it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter what uh, economical level you are. Success is just not only uh, finances. You know, it's, you can have success in, in uh, your life, yeah. just being happy, yeah. uh, having things uh, in your life that make you happy. And that's what we look at we, as being successful as well. Yeah. So there will be individuals from every walk. Uh, and that's what we look at. We need to help everybody, not just the people that have uh, financial success. Because if well, you, are, I've been married for 35 years, you know, yeah. uh, when Danelia's upset, She's upset, but when men get upset, we just go buy something to make us happy. You mean there's a difference? <laughs> there is a major difference. Okay, you heard it here on Think Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, so um, now, well, you, you, why did you guys pick this topic? I mean, of all the topics that you might have picked. Because, I mean, that's a really good question. The reason why we picked this topic is because so many people wonder, what does it take? What do I need to do? Um, you know, things aren't working out for me, uh, you know, so forth. And, and people always wanting to know how to move forward with their lives. How do I reach a level of success that I want? Uh, and so this is a part of that. I mean, John and I, we, we do a lot of mentoring, we teach classes and so forth, but we really felt that this was a venue that we could help people. Yeah. And, it's, and it's all about giving back. For those that uh, much have been given, you know, much is, is needed. And we, the American dream, when you're a kid, you dream. You look up in the, in the sky and you see planes. I want to be a pilot. Uh, you, you open a funny book and there is the, uh, Superman. I want to be Superman, Batman. The dreams are to be gone after. And mm -hmm. everybody can do that. You know, no one, no one can be left out unless they want to be. Well, it's interesting because most people spend more time planning their vacations than they do planning their lives. Isn't that true? Yes, that is so that true. That is totally true yes. and totally sad. And why? Yes. You know, so you, you know, I mean, I've, I've only gotten half of my answer <coughs> so far, yeah. but the half is, uh, you know, you're, you're empathetic with people who, mm -hmm. who don't understand that, that they got to plan their lives. Right. And, um, and you're mentoring them, and so this, this makes you want to be, you know, helpful to them. Right. But why don't they plan their lives? I mean, uh, let's go back to the days of, um, I don't know, the 1860s. I always think of, you know, Abe Lincoln was the kind of guy who he would figure it out. He would use his, you know, legal, rational brain, and he would, you know, figure it out. And he was, you know, to me, he was that kind of president. We were talking about who the best president ever was, ever, <laughs> the other day. We're well, not getting well, in that well, conversation. Well, we're, we're not going there. <laughs> It was a toss-up between <laughs> Lincoln and FDR. Okay, well, that's your toss-up. But, but to answer your question, we tend to forget that behavior is taught. If you look at how people act, what they do, you're taught. It can be blatant, it could be covert, but you are taught. When, when you look at, sure. I look at my father, I used to say, I'll never be like my dad. I look in the mirror and I do everything like my dad. Yeah. 
in good behavior as well as bad but, behavior. But why is it that we as a, you know, I guess a country even, we don't plan our lives as well as our vacations? Why is it, do we, do we not care about our lives? Do we feel, you know, we don't have control of them? Do we feel that it's, you know, it's like a predetermination that, that some deity has determined how things will go and we really can't change that? No. Uh, what, what is it that we have? Would Abe Lincoln have planned his life such as it was? Yeah. You know, people get so caught up in everyday living that most individuals by the time they go to bed at night are just exhausted and they don't place a priority on planning their lives. Was it always thus? Was it always mm -hmm. thus? Uh, perhaps. I think that there was always that segment, I mean, the, I, I think that was always the way and then it's individuals who make a decision to plan their lives, to change their lives and take action to make that happen, they're the Come ones on. who move forward. Let me ask you this. Yes. Why do I have to plan my life? Go Why ahead. don't I just do this karma thing? You know, you walk down the street, if the piano is going to fall on your head, okay. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you let fate take you where fate will take you. Some people, some people do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe a lot. Maybe Quite a, a few lot. people do that. And the thing is, because we're in this computer age, we see more things now than we did before. It was always here, but now it's thrust in front of us so quickly. We're, we're talking instantaneous. Someone in Japan is watching this right now. For that to happen 30 years ago, you know, it would take years for them to see us here. Yeah. But also, let me, let me answer that question too. We were all born for a purpose. Okay, that's what we were, we're really that's, getting yeah, that we're getting. Hey. We were all born for a purpose, okay? But a lot of us don't find what that purpose is before we pass on. And the reason is, is because we didn't have a plan and we didn't allow that plan to work. So what happens is that we're so caught up that we're moving, this is the plan, this is where we're supposed to be going. We're going over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, but we don't get back on the track. So how, I'm just a kid. You know, my father wants me to do this and that. He keeps mm -hmm. bugging me to do this and that. He's got mm -hmm. it all worked out for me because he thinks that if I do this and that, I'll be successful in mm -hmm. his definition of success. Well, success. But okay, at some how do point, I say, you know, I'm Dad, I'm six years old. I'm old enough to plan my own life. Just get out of the way. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. How do I resist that kind of influence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, my dad didn't resist it. I told my dad what I wanted to do when I was six, and he said, okay. But he still told me what to do. <laughs> Our son told us he w what he wanted to do when he was six. Parenting is forever. As I said, I have to go back. Behavior is taught. Well, that's a very interesting point, John. Parenting is forever. Mm -hmm. Because I think that the parent builds, you know, into the child, his, his, the, like his, the father, his own mm, model. He builds yes. that into the child, and as long as the child live, lives, right. the child carries that around. Good, bad, you know, you know, successful or not, um, he carries that around. It's always that voice talking to him. What you know, what was said when he mm -hmm. was six, mm -hmm. is, is is it repeats over and over again. That's what Sigma Freud says. Yeah, yeah. I think you've been yeah. reading yeah. Sigma. Yeah. But let me I think he said it was the mother, though. Yeah, but he said the father too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we always relate to this story. A pair of twins were born. Father alcoholic, very abusive. They followed the twins, they grew up. One of the twins became an alcoholic, the other twin became very successful in life. They asked both twins, um, why did you end up the way you did? They asked the alcoholic twin, why did you end up becoming an alcoholic? He said, look at my father, of course I'd become an alcoholic. They asked the twin who became successful in life, how come you ended up being successful and not an alcoholic? I he didn't said, want to be at, like my father. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly right. right. Exactly it's right. All, and that was our show today. It's all about your attitude towards the situation. Which you, determines your altitude. Which determines your altitude. You can either use challenges in your life to catapult you forward or you can use uh, ca uh, experiences in your life to make excuses for why you're not. Okay, well, you know, sometimes you can use, you know, experiences in your life to, to take a break. That's true. And that, sometimes you feel it overwhelming and, and That's irresistible. True. That's so we'll take a short break. All right. Uh, that's uh, Donalia and uh, John uh, 
New, New, Newman? Newman, N-E-W-M-A-N. -E Keys to success, yeah, I got it, half of it right anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're on Think Tech Talks, Think Tech um, Tectorials. We're talking about keys to success, successful making of sausage, sausage making. And we take one minute, we're gonna regroup, we're gonna come back, we'll be right here, you'll see. You stay there, we stay here, we'll see you in a minute. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right and what's good and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Bingo. I told you so. We came back. Of course we came back. We never left, actually. But we decided during the break, and I'm sorry you weren't around for it, <laughs> that we we're going to cover the show today. Yeah. Okay. Who was your guest? Why did you pick that guest? How did the guest do? Give me, give me a pricey. Okay. So we picked Senator Willis Spiro because he is a senator. He, um, you know, he, as a child, he was born in another country, but he is American. And he, you know, had a lot of experiences growing up and he had a different, he, he thought that he was going to take a different path and then he ended up going on a different path and becoming a senator. So we thought, and also as a senator, you know, we, we look up to senators, etc., and we don't necessarily get the person, talk about the person. So we wanted him to come on the show to talk about himself and, and to, to give some um, advice to others about, how do you become successful? Yeah. And most people, they see presidents, senators, governors, and they think that they're untouchable, you know, because, yeah. well, I can't speak to the senator, I can't speak to the yeah, governor. Yeah, yeah. And Senator Espiro uh, epitomizes the common He's man. very approachable. Very, very approachable. approachable. Yeah. Very approachable. Very approachable. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, uh, sometimes in order to, um, you know, uh, even as you said, as you suggest, successful people, we have to unzip them. Mm -hmm. We have to find out what makes them tick. Right. Um, so what did you find out about him today? That he's just like all of us. <laughs> he's just like all of us. He's had challenges in his life, just like all of us. Yeah. But and he, he had a great attitude about those challenges and understood that, you know, you have a great attitude towards that challenge and that you don't let it push you back, you let it move you forward. Yeah. What did you learn from him? not about his life, but about the elements of success, you know, um, from the, the discussion, what popped out for you? What popped out for me was that he said, surround you with yourself with positive people. Uh, that was something that he really what, focused what on today. a positive person? A positive I mean, person. I'm sure that Donald Trump has surrounded himself <laughs> with positive people. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well yeah. we, we look at and we, we teach, mirror and model successful people people that you look up to, people that you would like to be like. Yeah. Uh, my, fa my father used to tell me, uh, if ever you wanted to be s something or someone, talk to a person that's where you want to be. Yeah. And it has worked for Danielle and I. Yeah. I mean, the first thing we wanted to do was own a home of our own. We talked to homeowners. We owned a home. Yeah. Uh, what about... You know, I always ask, and we had a show earlier today about two teachers from St. Andrews Priory, you know, and there were science teachers, and they're into science. So <clears throat> I said to him, I always say this to teachers, uh, or for that matter, researchers, was there somebody in your, I'm going to ask you the same question, was there somebody in your life that changed it, that, that was the, um, you know, the person that made you think thoughts you hadn't thought before, mm -hmm. that made you take the direction you've taken in your life? Uh, uh, a teacher, a mentor, would mm -hmm. be like you guys are, mm -hmm. um, a, you know, a person that you, you know, met on a train, whatever it is, uh, who you remember and you, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a, it's like 
uh, what do you call it, in loco parentis. You, it's like your father mm -hmm. may become current, mm -hmm. uh, somebody else who acts in the same influential role mm -hmm. in your mind and memory. Mm -hmm. And you think of anybody? Yes. There were two people in my life. My second grade teacher, Miss Smith, and my dad. My dad was my best friend. He was my father. You're a lucky man, you know. Mm. Because that isn't say always that. the case. That's not yeah. always the case. The study of psychology is built around families where the father was not the best mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've known many, many friends that that one wasn't so. Yeah. However. You're a lucky man. I'm a lucky man. I'm, yeah. I'll say, not luck, I'm a blessed man. Yeah, okay. And I'll take it that way. Who was the other fellow? Miss Smith, my second grade teacher. Oh. It was a female. I, said, I don't know her personally. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you want to know her person. <laughs> I, was a, I was a tough little guy, you know, and, and she taught me integrity. She taught me what it meant to be accountable. What was it about her that makes you think of her now, X plus years later? Because it was the way she, I think, the way she carried herself. She was just a person who was never plastic. If she said something, she meant it. If she... Uh, she connected with you. Well, she you connected, connected with her. She connected with me and because she was a lot like my dad. You know, it was, it was a woman that was like dad. Yeah. And that was something when I was growing up back in the day, so to speak, that wasn't a, a common thing. Isn't it funny how sometimes, uh, you know, a teacher sticks in your, yeah. your memory? I mean, even a grade school teacher. But one more thing. She wanted all of the kids to succeed. She wanted us to succeed. And she wouldn't let us think of anything else but that. Suppose you were a naughty kid, would she want you oh, to I was oh, a, he was. I was a naughty kid. <laughs> That, I mean, no I, was a, it. I was the guy that sat in the hall and had to say, I'm a filibuster, I'm a filibuster. I mean, I mean she, she did, I was the guy that had to have the sign, you know. It was a trip. I've heard the stories, believe me. <laughs> okay. And I you, babe? That's, that's, yep. that's, that's good. I mean, for, so now we're going to talk to you, Okay. Yeah. So for me, it was my mother. My mother uh, just was really a role model for me. Um, and then also the first employer I had when I came to the United States. He, uh, I thought I was doing a lousy job in the job in the job that I was doing. I went in to talk to him and I said, look, I better resign because I'm really doing a bad job. And he said, and here I was thinking that you are the best employee I've ever had. <laughs> so he sat me down. He said, you know, you have so much potential. He said, if you would like to learn. He, he owned a plane. He had, you know, a lot. He was very successful. Uh, he said, if you want to learn how to and you're willing to listen to what I have to share with you and you're not and you're not going to become combative over it he said I'll show you how and he did okay he did he and showed you remember us how. him now oh absolutely I had a conversation with him three weeks ago Is letting right? them know that we were going to be friends. you were yeah. a lucky person that you absolutely. could have a long-term relationship that way absolutely yeah. well I let him know that we, we were coming on the show mm -hmm. and so he thought about it it's funny he got all excited and then he called the next day he said you should do this and you should do that you know really great so you know we're very fortunate my mother my mother just always was a role model to me you know just as a as a woman because it was a different it was a different life for women back then as now and she just you know, always, just always said the right thing to me, was always there for me. Yeah. You're lucky also? Also, very much, yeah. very much. Okay, why don't you interrogate me about the people that I, that I just... Share with us. Make believe you're the hosts of so the show. Share with us two people in your life that was significant, hmm. if you will. Hmm. Hmm. I'll give you one, then I'll have to think about the second one. Probably the most influential person for me growing up, okay, was a man named Leo Varsano. And I met him when I was 16. Mm. He was my camp counselor. Mm. He had just gotten out of the Navy mm -hmm. in the, um, I guess it was in the 50s. And, um, and he wore all his Navy clothes, <laughs> <laughs> including his uniform clothes. And he was a very quiet man. Mm -hmm. Mm but he had a steel in him. Mm -hmm. And um, he was into literature. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Navy enlisted, but he was into literature, and he would tell us about books. And um, I will never forget how he explained and read parts of uh, Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, mm -hmm. which was my, you know, entry mm -hmm. uh, into mm, uh, literature, I suppose, mm -hmm. through Leo Borsano. Mm -hmm. And here it is, you know, it's, uh, it's got to be uh, 60 years later, close to it. Yeah. And I still remember him, and mm -hmm. I, I can still see him. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. Why did Leo Barsano leave this impression on mm -hmm. me? But he is a pure heart. Mm -hmm. He was a good person. Mm -hmm. And he was, I wouldn't say he was close in the sense that he wasn't going to tolerate everything. He, he brought with him the discipline of the Navy, which mm -hmm. I appreciated. Yes. Um, but he was also, you know, uh, it was an interdependence. Uh, we needed him, me and my bunkmates, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. needed us too. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, all kinds of affection mm -hmm. uh, is better when it's mutual, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it, I think it started out with a certain respect and mm -hmm. affection. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was one. And I remember the second one. Okay. Her name was Maria Kosko. Maria Kosko was a, uh, was a Polish woman, and she taught me French in my college days. And she was hard like nails, and she'd come out of the war from Poland, mm -hmm. and she didn't give you a break on anything. Okay. She was a woman who absolutely demanded excellence from everyone, and she was mm -hmm. brutal when you didn't provide it. You sure it wasn't Miss Smith? <laughs> 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 or my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very interesting uh, you ask me, and I can yeah. actually come up with this stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm not making this up. These yeah. are the people. Oh, well, no. we understand. Oh, you know, that's, the, that's why it's so important when we're more mature. I'll say more mature, not old. As we're more mature, one of our, you know, goals in life should be to mentor younger people because, you know, right now we have such a high divorce rate and, you know, so many of our youth don't have that role model. And so anything that, that we can do as we mature and we grow to be able to help others other young, you know, individuals to be able to mentor them and, and teach them and help them to understand that they, no matter what their past, they can still move forward. So what's the difference between mentoring and uh, clinical psychology? Big uh, part? What's the difference Mentoring between? and clinical psychology. Because somebody comes in and says, you know, I'm not fulfilled. I am mm -hmm. not fulfilled. I need somebody to help me, mm -hmm. you know, understand where I have to go and help mm -hmm. me get there. And you're my mentor, so mm -hmm. mentor me. Mm -hmm. But what's the difference between that and a psychologist? I think it's six to one, half dozen to another. Yeah, they're well, both the same. Next thing you're going to want to know that you're going to want the mentors to be able to prescribe drugs. Well, I, I just know it. I know it's coming. <laughs> I well, hope that, not. That, that, that's I hope that's not. where I was going to go with this. I hope not. With a mentor, of course, you know, yeah. you know, with a clinical psychologist, there might be drugs involved, and there might be um, also talking a lot about your past and so forth. You know. With a mentor, it's focusing on the future more so than focusing on the past. So yeah. there are differences. Well, I, I know a guy who, who calls himself, actually puts it in his stationery and, and he sends me a lot of email, and he mm. calls himself a life coach. Mm. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. Mm. He, he wants to be my life coach. I've heard oh, of your that. life coach. He is not my life coach. <laughs> I understand. I, 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 yeah. don't, I don't need right. him as my life coach. Right. but. Right. Mm, so what is the difference between a mentor and a life coach? Maybe there's no difference. I don't know. But, <laughs> but what you just said was the key. You don't want him to be your life I coach. I don't. I don't. So if that's, it stops right there. The buck yeah, stops yeah, there. Yeah. We, we, we teach that it's hard sometimes to remember names and faces, but you can always remember how you were treated. And Absolutely the, right. And that's the key to life. You know, in, in the practice of law, you remember the, the lawyer on the other side. Yes. Sometimes the client, too, but mostly the lawyer. Forever, for your yes. whole life. And you cannot remember the case. You can't remember the issues mm -hmm. or even the facts of the case. Mm -hmm. But you remember the movie that mm -hmm. went on between the that's two. Right. That's exactly right. And you know that, just as a, a point aside, you know that that guy is going to play the same movie with mm -hmm. you the next case you Thank have you. with him. Right. Um, but, you, you know, the remarkable thing is um, that it's, it's a gestalt kind of recollection. It's a good recollection or maybe a bad recollection. Mm -hmm. 
and, and you remember the sort of the general outline of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I really wonder uh, where, where that plays. Maybe what you're telling me is that to be a good mentor, to help somebody succeed, find his path, and execute a plan, um, he has to like you. You have to like him. Uh, if you don't have that kind of bond, am I right? Yeah? Absolutely. There has to be a relationship. And not only that, a mentor is somebody that um, you look up to, that you, that you model. So the mentor needs to have, you know, integrity, um, you know, love, um, you know, just really be willing to work with the person. They're not too busy to to take time out to work with the individual. You know, so you know that's that's a part of what we do too. You know. Well, I guess what I see happening here is that you're going to call these guys down, mm -hmm. and you're going to use them as mm -hmm. and the more successful, the better, because yes. then you know it's a reality test. Yes. I mean, it's nice to talk theoretically, but if right. the guy is successful. Yes then you know you got yes. something. And you're going to try to, I get, well, it's kind of reverse mentoring. You're going to deconstruct right. Right, what you might have said to him or what he would say to you. Right. In the, am I right? Yes. Somewhere along that Well, line, you know, this is the thing about the show. The show for us is, you know, as we, as we developed in our, you know, careers and business and all that sort of thing for years, it's like, where do I turn to for help? Where do I, you know, you can go on the internet, there's lots of information, but you're on your own, kind of, because, you you know, there's not that relationship built. And so we wanted to provide a place here at Think Tech Hawaii where individuals can clue into the show, listen to the show, and really hear what individuals here in our community, successful individuals here in our community, um, how did they become successful? And okay, and I, and I'm going to oh. take a break, okay. and when we come back, John, I would like to hear from you okay. about how you thought it went today, okay. what the strong points were, what the lessons were, uh, you know, how this shapes your view of doing the show going forward, okay, because after all, we're talking about sausage. Okay. Okay, yeah. we'll take a short break. Uh, that's Danelia and John <coughs> uh, They They run Keys uh, to Success on Thursday at 11. Here on Think Tech, we're doing sausage today as we do on Thursday afternoons. So the key to a successful success, what did I write down here? The keys to successful sauce making, sausage making. Let me come right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Leatham here with Think Tech Hawaii, and I invite you to watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 o'clock um, here in Hawaii on OC16. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Aloha, this is Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Housing Tech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We're here to inform, motivate, and entertain you. Join us. Hola, soy Maria Mera y estoy aquí para invitaros a mi show bilingüe Viva Hawaii en ThinkTech Hawaii cada dos lunes a las 3 de la tarde. Estamos aquí para informaros, motivaros y entreteneros. Apuntaros. Successful sausage making right here, right now. Okay, John, I wanted to get your take on how it went today, what you learned today, what, what may affect your you know, way of doing this in the future. Uh, give me your gestalt uh, impressions. Well, today was an uh, eye-opening for myself and, and Janelia. Uh, this was our first, you know, first time out. It was, it was uh, baptism by fire. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's, I mean, what I, but, but, but what, what, what we, we felt, as I said, you'll always remember how you were treated. And the warmth that we felt in this room from your staff and yourself uh, kept us on task. Uh, just little things like where to look. You know, I, I was looking the wrong <laughs> way, you know. And, and uh, little things, you know, that learning that once you are in a position, if you move, you know, it takes you out of focus. And, but we had fun because we were looking forward to uh, being here and sharing. Yeah. And we don't, we don't look at a system. We look at what, what works. Were you nervous? Nah. I, I was. I was a little nervous. However, you know, one of the things that we teach is that um, you, you are going to have fear when you're doing something that's different in your life. 
but you've got to work through that fear and just believe that it's going to be okay. It's and an it was okay. And it was an opportunity. And everything, it's an opportunity for us. So, you know, it's an opportunity for people to get to know us. It's an opportunity for people to, um, you know, know what we do in our business and yeah. what others, you know, and, and yeah. having community members so, here. Actually, I just thought of something else, too. What's that? It's an opportunity for you to actually help this, quote, successful person that you're with, you know, and, and actually... Uh, Show them a few things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I you can know, that's good, but it could have yeah. been better. Yes, <laughs> I know. And that's exactly what we do. Yeah. That's the fun thing about Danilia and I. Uh, we aren't judgmental. Uh, we shoot from the hip, you know. Uh, what you we, see is we, what you get. We, we hug each other a lot. You know, what's right is right. You know, we don't sugarcoat things. Yeah. And uh, there's no gray area. You How know? about that, though? Going forward... Would you would you press uh, a guy who didn't answer your question? Would you uh, press a guy mm -hmm. who was giving you an agenda? Mm -hmm. uh, would you what would you do if you felt that he was not communicating with you, that he was not giving value to the listener? What would okay. you do? We'd keep asking the same question over and over. But that's the, one of the. And the thing is, we're that's not. Why you're here to our integrity the is everything. Mm. We're not going to be a part of an agenda. You know, we wouldn't let ourselves do that. Yeah. And if a person was doing that, tactfully, we would address it. Yeah. I remember in the days of my practice, you know, and I'd be asking a question in a deposition, which is, you know, always a little tense. And if the guy didn't answer the question, you know, I would, I would, uh, I would say, uh, I'm going to rephrase that question. And then I would ask him precisely the same, the same. question mm -hmm. again. That's, That's right. exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> and by the fourth time, it became clear, you know, yes. that I was going to keep on asking him this yes. question. Mm -hmm. But I'm always rephrasing it. You understand? Yes. Well, and that's the key. <laughs> and the thing is, we we we're not we're not here to do anything but help people. Yeah. And we and the people that we bring on, uh, that's what we want from them. If they can't do that, yeah. you know. Uh, that's something that we'll talk to you about. Uh, how do we... Well, I guess one big question is that, you know, if you're going to actually get in there in a process, it's not mm -hmm. just learning from them, it's actually, you know, engaging mm -hmm. in the process of improving the lives involved. That's right. Uh, you know, you have to tip them off. Mm -hmm. I think you have to. Maybe not. Maybe it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. But I think you, you probably want to give him your view mm -hmm. of uh, how you're going to go on this mm -hmm. and what you're really about mm -hmm. uh, and what he can expect, where he can expect he, he can expound mm -hmm. and where he expect he's, he's going to be his feet to the fire, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, that's, that's a mm -hmm. delicate matter. Yeah, because some people, you ask what time it is and they say 4 o'clock. Some people, you ask what time it is, and they tell you where they bought the clock, <laughs> you know, how much it costs, and it's 4 o'clock. Now, Senator Sparrow, we didn't have to worry about it's 4 o'clock. Yeah, right, he yeah. was open. He wanted to share. Yeah, he's and a good guy. He's, he's a, a very good guy. Thing. And all of the individuals that we interview or that we come in contact with, we let them know beforehand, this is where we are. Yeah. You know, these are some of the questions that we're going to ask you, yeah. and we want... Uh, Answers from the heart. Yeah. Well, to, some of them are going to go on and on. Yeah, you know? Some of them. But and, to, and I always tell them, I say, you know, you're not going to have more than two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. You can try to wax eloquent for two or three minutes, mm -hmm. but by then, I'm mm -hmm. going to have a joke or a gag for Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I'm going to talk right key. over you. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy yourself, but it's not going to last mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> That's it. That's well, it. We're, we're also very um, fortunate because we do know. You know, we have relationships with several individuals in our community who <coughs> are very successful. And so we already have that relationship established. Not everybody, but, you know, most people um, that will be on the show. Well, uh, you know, you guys strike me yeah. as dedicated to the proposition yes. um, of getting quality guests. Yes. And that really is very important. Very think important. Tech, you know. Um, and so, uh, how do you do that? Well, mm -hmm. I, you know, you've done it with uh, Willis Sparrow, yeah. but uh, I'm sure you'll do it again. And what I sense in you is that you're not going to take no for an answer. Uh, no. You're, you're going you're gonna, to you're find <laughs> them pursue. and you're going <laughs> to convince them. <laughs> we pursue. The, the key That's is, exactly. is, we look, as I said, it's the gamut. It's everyone. We don't want to leave anyone out. Uh, we'll be interviewing people that were sleeping on the beach that are no longer doing that now. We'll interview people that couldn't turn on a computer that's writing books. You know, when people see that they can do, they tend to pay attention and yeah. they tend to try and change. Yeah. 
and that's the key. That's something you might include in your array, that is the book review. Mm -hmm. It's an art form, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. so much fun, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you don't have to read the book really carefully, you just mm -hmm. have to know a lot about the book, mm -hmm. and you don't have to, you know, the, the biographical background of the author, but, mm -hmm. but wow, you know, because that author has spent a good part of his or oh, her life writing. Absolutely. Uh, they're completely invested in the book. Absolutely. And you will get such, I mean, you're talking about success, mm -hmm. talking about life lessons, mm -hmm. it's all there in a book. Right. And if you can get that author to open up to you, yes. oh, it's a great show. Yes. You know? oh, yeah. And it's that really, I think, what counts here. I think uh, my thought about your show is that you, you can, and ideally you should, unzip them. Yes. should find out what makes them tick. Yes. Mm. You know, what, where did they decide to adopt this, 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 um, this model? Mm -hmm. How did they do it? Uh, people who helped them along the way, mm -hmm. uh, what their plan is from this point forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wh 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 their life, their life on this planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you know, is it going to work mm -hmm. or is it going to be a pain? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right, know? exactly right. I mean, you know, that's what we teach. If you're living one life here. Let's enjoy every single minute of it. Or not. You know, or not. But that's your choice. Yeah. That is your choice. Yeah. And um, you can give both roads. That's exactly mm -hmm. the right. The ghost of Christmas future and the that's ghost right. of Christmas past. And it all comes down to your attitude. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. And that's why our show was focused on attitude determines altitude today. You guys are great. Thank you. Well, carry on. We look forward to seeing you evolve. Thank you. And, and find a place in the community of success. Thank you. <laughs> and we also want the audience to, to participate. You know, at the end of each show, we're going to give a couple of ideas. Talk to your friends and associates yep. and tell them to call. Yep. Call our uh, hotline. Mm -hmm. It's right there. You can tell them the number. You okay. can also tell, yeah, them, we'll tell them on the side yes. before the show down. or I'm ask them to send a Twitter to ThinkTech HI. Yeah. Mm. Um, and in this way, you, you can have engagement with the audience. And okay. I think right. they will, this, this kind of show that you're doing really yeah. lends itself to that. Yes. Mm. We look forward to it. Okay. Danelia and John Newman, keys to success here making sausage, keys to the successful of making success sausage, here on Think Tech Tutorial. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you oh, so you're much. You're so Jay. welcome. And